Hi, I want to show you how to build high quality software faster using scenario hunting. So let's hunt a simple scenario from this event storming board. After installing the Miro add-on, I'm going to open it. It asks us a couple of questions about the scenario under test and I'm going to answer. It asks us to select the then step of the test. So let me select it and select the one step and the system under test and the context in which the test is meaningful, which is sales and type a name for the scenario items from basket. At this point, I check whether the input provides enough data to the subject to be able to calculate the expected results or it requires some preconditions. As in this case, removing items from an empty basket can be a scenario, but as the name of the scenario indicates, it's a happy path scenario. So the items need to be in the basket to be able to be removed. So let's add the given items added to basket as a precondition of the scenario. And it turns out that it's missing from the board too. Interesting, so let's add it to the board first. Items added to basket. I have customer ID. I have product ID and amount. Let's set an example for amount, let's say 20 and given items added to basket. Now the scenario is ready and I can start what if analyzing it to discover more scenarios, but let's keep it for this demo and select a template and save it and switch to this empty test project. Programming language and paradigm are not important here. We will talk about them in a minute. And here's the required behavior as test code is driven from design. So I can confidently solve this puzzle and make the build pass, then make the test pass and refactor it a couple of times and bring it to life as quickly as possible. But wait, do I have to use a specific programming language or paradigm or coding style? To answer that question, let's select another template and save it and go to the project. And here's the YAML representation of the same scenario. Let's try it again. Gherkin's used for a different level of tests, but let's just give it a try to see how it works. Save it, go to the project. And here's a human friendly version of the same scenario. But where do templates come from? Let's open template studio. This is where you can easily ripple drive different types of test templates for different purposes. In the middle, the preview pane displays the Gherkin representation of the scenario we just hunted. And the template that's used to generate it is on the left. And as I make changes to the template, I can see the preview live on the preview pane. So let's replace the template with something simpler. Dot is the model of the scenario we just hunted. Let's pass it to this YAML function so that we can see the YAML version of the scenario we just hunted on the preview pane. But I want to see JavaScript version of the scenario, something like this. I want to see JavaScript, it's showing me YAML, so I'll delete it. This is the template, this is the preview of the template, and this is what I expect to see as a preview of the template. So let's copy what I expect to see as a preview of the template and paste it as actual template to make all three identical and change the language to JavaScript and start to replace the constants with variables to gradually build the template. Do you remember this model? Yes, this is the model we've been dealing with while we were hunting the scenario. Do you remember where we put the basket? Yes, we selected it as subject. So let's say I want subject, the title, and we have basket here again. And the diff tool indicates that the B is supposed to be lowercase as we expected. So let's pass it to this camel case function and look how it helps us with showing us where the error is. Let's fix it and copy it and paste it here, here and here and gradually replace the constants with variables. I guess that's enough, you got it. 
I just wanted to show you how easy it is to build scenario hunting templates. Thank you for listening.